I'm talking about core stability and muscle development in the horse because this is an area I think that we need to think a little bit more about, particularly when we're talking about injury prevention. Um, if we could turn the lights down, that would be really useful because I think for everyone to see what's happening. Thank you. Um, so why is muscle development important? We need muscle strength and endurance to perform the skills that these horses need to do. Fatigue is something we think of as horses being out of breath. So the cardiorespiratory, heart and lung fitness that Dave is talking about, sometimes we forget that actually the horses can, in, can fatigue or get tired with individual muscle groups. Then we get loss of muscle support, incoordination and injury. Or we get resistance in the horse. The horse says, I'm finding it very difficult to do this because my legs are tired. And then it gets to a point where it actually, not that it won't do it anymore, but it can't. So if you think about when you go to the gym, you're quite stiff and sore the next day, and you may be even more stiff and sore two days later. So that happens to our horses that are training their muscles as well. So if we look at these two, two videos, we have a horse on the left who has just been doing walking over raised poles. So if you ever look at his hind legs, you can see they're reasonably stable. On the right, that same horse, I hope you can see it on these videos, Look at his right hind, how unstable that is. Now, that is not because there's anything wrong with this horse. This horse has just spent 15 minutes walking over raised poles, and its muscles are so tired, it can't stabilize its legs. You wouldn't have thought that was hard work, but it has created muscle fatigue. So what is core stability? Core stability is the middle part of the horse being stable enough to particularly carry the rider. So you have a weight of a rider on top of the horse's back, you need to have the muscles underneath there holding it strongly enough that the, that the back doesn't dip downwards and connecting the front and the hind legs so they can move. So if we look at the horse on the top right, that has poor muscle development, has got poor core stability. The middle one also has got a drop thorax, its withers are quite low, its abdomen is underneath, also poor core stability. The horse on the bottom of the right has got a nice tight abdomen, its back is nice and straight, good core stability. So it is these, particularly these muscles underneath here and stabilizing under here that create the balance and support. Then these small muscles underneath the spine which allow the small subtle movements that are really important. If you have a horse that has a stable strong core, it will train with a correct pattern of nervous muscle use because it's able to do it. If you have a horse with a poor core it, and it's not strong, fit or flexible enough to do so, it starts cheating. It forms compensatory wrong movements. That means it uses incorrect neuromuscular pathways and incorrect muscle development, and you end up with injury. So we did a study where we looked at the amount a horse's back moves up and down during trot, and the same thing happens. The back extends and, and, and flexes every, every time during the stride. We found that if we looked at the muscle development of these horses, if they had more muscle development through the top of their back and underneath their abdomen, we actually stabilized the range of motion so they were more stable through their core, more stable, able to carry the rider. So this horse here has had three months of core muscle development between the top picture and the bottom picture. We've given it good nutritional building blocks and we've done it a core muscle stability program. Look at the difference in that horse up there at the top and the bottom. So the top is before and the bottom is three months of core stability. So look at the amount of muscle development we have here and how the back is up and the, the abdomen is supported. That not only affects how the horse looks and how it stabilizes its spine, it also affects how it moves. The horse on the top has had nine months to a year of muscle development program. Here we've got a dropped abdomen, dropped back, not very much muscle development through here. We put this horse through a muscle development program. Look at the difference, it's the same horse. And look how differently it's moving in this picture compared to the corresponding picture on the other side. It can really sit down, collect, and lift up its body. So how do we do it? Well, the first thing is managing it right. A horse spends at least 23 hours a day doing things that are not being ridden. So we look at how we manage it. We get it eat off the floor, allow it to go out in the field, move around, manage all of its relative movement patterns. It can eat off the floor in the stable. But remember, not all horses are the same. Some horses stand like this one because it's got a long, long front legs, short neck, can't reach the floor. So it stands like this, extending its back. So actually, that horse is better eating a little bit higher, as we have here, eating at the hay net. 
So what are the options that we have for muscle development? The first stage that I always take is stable exercises. We can do exercises in the stable with horses without sitting on them. Then we can do groundwork without sitting on them, which could include things like pole work and training aids. We can do ridden exercises, and we can use more recent adjunctive age like treadmills, dry treadmills, water treadmills. What we need to do is choose the appropriate one for the horse conformation, any problem it has, its stage of muscle development, and we can use a combination. What about stable exercises? We need to have a first stage, making sure we have ad, um, adequate flexibility for the horse. Then we need to look at improving strength and endurance of the muscles, switching on the correct movement patterns, so the correct neuromuscular pathways, ideally without the weight of the rider or the challenge of movement, so that the horse can do it the way we want it to. And we may need this as a baseline before we introduce any other types of exercise or muscle development. The next stage in the stable, we can, so this in the stable, we can do this muscle development by doing many repetitions during a day. We can also do it by switching on correct pathways before we sit on them, so right before we start moving. And this includes, this um, involves proprioception and muscle use. So we're using the correct use of muscles and increasing muscle development by repetitions. So just a few little exercises, I hope you can see this, if the lights may need to go down a little bit further, but... Um, this horse on the left is standing um, with his back down. We can see that along here. What we've asked him to do is to lift up by switching on his muscle groups under here, switching on the muscle groups around the shoulder and underneath his abdomen to lift up his back, and you can see his back is lifted up. Now, doing many of those repetitions reminds the horse to do it correctly. We can also do that by doing a bottom tuck. So he's dropped down here a little bit. We say, right, stick your bottom underneath, Bring your bottom underneath and, and uh, sit. Doing this very gently and, and quietly and calmly, we can gradually encourage the horse to use the muscles it needs for, um, for, uh, um, for um, its core. So on the top, we've got three different horses here. The top one has got very good flexibility and stability. So when we ask him to do the exercise, he can bring his bottom underneath, he stays stable, and he can hold it. The horse at the bottom here, if we look as a comparison, he's not stable. He's very flexible, but he's not very stable, so he wobbles all over the place when we asked him to do it. So he finds that a little bit harder, so he needs probably more, more work to get that to working. Whereas this horse here doesn't like it. It's restricted, and it resents the movement, so it won't do it, and it says, I don't like it. So doing hundreds of repetitions of this on its own is not necessarily going to be the right thing for this horse. So developing a program for these horses ideally needs a physio or someone who knows what they're doing to really help design the right way of doing it. Where you put the horse's head with baited stretches or carrot stretches affects what happens to their back. Some nice work done with Hillary, by Hillary Clayton and Narelle Stubbs on this. Looking at if you put the head higher up, they bend the neck. If you put the head right down to the floor, they start bending their back. And you can see that same here, down here. Back stays down with the head up here. Back is lifting up when the head is down on the floor. So these are exercises it's really practical to do. The um, other thing is, what about our asymmetric strength? Look at this horse's left hind. Do you see how unstable that is? This is a horse that has not worked very much, has come out of a field and has worked. At the end of the training session, it's very unstable. There is nothing wrong with this horse. This went, horse went on to represent Great Britain about 30 times with no treatment in that left hind. All we did was muscle development. But what you need to do is to do that. So things like a tail pull, which is switching on these muscle groups, can actually help st the lateral stability in these horses. So what about groundwork? We can use groundwork to stimulate these no correct neuromuscular pathways. We can use particular training aids to stimulate it and poles to help. So the first thing I often look at with these horses is to lift their thorax. And there are a variety of training aids. It may even include side reins that will help them put the head down, head and neck down, and lift the thorax up without forcing the bottom down. And you can see with a horse like this, he's got poor muscle development and he's quite fixed through this area here. So we don't want to shove his bottom underneath him. But in the next stage, we can use something that puts a little band around the bottom as well as lift up their chest. So we can see here, this is a Pessoa training aid on this horse. There are some other equivalents. What is happening here is actually it's introducing lumbosacral flexion. So the bottom is coming underneath. And what it does is it reminds the horse to bring the hind leg forward before it goes back too far. 
and it actually increases lumbosacral flexion. We did some nice studies on this to show this, but without overloading the limbs because it didn't increase ground reaction forces. So the, um, another one that is being used is, an, uh, is using a band under the abdomen to stimulate the abdomen abdominal muscles to switch on, but also has a potential for a band around the bottom. This has been shown to increase stability in some nice research studies, but the thing I think you need to be very careful when people have decided to use things like this is what does happen. This back band acts as a resistance band. So when the horse steps sideways or steps forward, it, the resistance band comes against them. So the horse's automatic response is to take the route of least resistance. So it starts doing this. After a while, it says, gosh, so much easier to do this, which is not a pattern we want the horse to do. So we need to be very careful how long this is used and how appropriate it is used. Um, poles, we want to tailor the height depending on the horse and arrange it to develop the correct use of the body with symmetry, posture, core muscle activation, and increasing strength and endurance. So we've done some interesting studies looking at an, showing that an increase in pole height increases the movement pattern through the legs. So this horse drags its hind legs quite a lot over the floor in its normal pattern. When we start adding poles to this, what happens is the horse lifts the legs up and actually starts using the correct muscles to lift those legs up and over the poles. So as the pole height goes up, we actually find that the horse um, lifts and engages. Now, this doesn't work with every horse. It depends on their capacity to do it. So setting up the height and the distance is really important, and you've got to do very carefully, but it can be really helpful in these horses. Um, pole arrangement can reflect whether or not you want loading or you want lift on your horses. So you can lift and raise different sides of it. And also, if you want to switch on the muscles that move the legs sideways and apart. So this slalom exercise here, which on these second parts the pony does correctly, is making the horse lift up and step over the pole, which helps the sideways stabilization. You can then add a resistance band to that as the horse is stepping sideways over the pole, and it actually works a little bit harder. So this is a horse that all it has done is three months of walking pole exercise. It was not ridden. This is before on the left, and then you can see the massive muscle development and improvement and core strength on the right. That is three months of walking over raised poles in a correct distance and correct height. Um, other things that are out on the market are this whole body vibration training, which is shown to, in one study, show increase the size and symmetry of the multifidus, which is one of our special core muscles. A land and dry treadmill, um, have, or, or dry treadmill can be used. The, the limitation with this is because the treadmill belt takes the limb back, sometimes the back leg comes back too far, actually extends the back. So often if these are being used, you need to be careful what for, and also using a training aid around the horse's bottom to remind it not to let that leg be left behind. Water treadmills have really become quite fashionable recently. We've done a lot of studies recently, which um, the BEF and um, World Class have been particularly supportive of us doing, and Pet Plan have funded. So, and we have seen that what happens is as you lift up the height of the water, the legs flex more. And the same with the front leg and the hind leg. But the forelimb ends up not tending to lift quite as high and it pushes through the water, whereas the hind limb steps better over the water. So we tend to find it's really good for hind limb muscle development, but sometimes we need to be a little bit careful with the front limb muscle development. But the only other thing is how you use it is really important. We found in the studies we did, if you have the water too high and the horse moving too fast, what happens is it just extends its back which is the last thing you want it to do. So how a treadmill is, water treadmill is used is really, really important. Don't just use it. Ridden exercises can include things like transitions, half halts and pole work, which switch on the core, grid work, and of course exercises for specific muscle groups. So things like lateral work will switch on specific muscles that might support the thorax around the shoulder, like shoulder in. Um, it might switch on some of the abdominal muscles, like if you're doing a half pass. Jumping will switch on particular core muscles in the approach to the jump. So all of these things themselves have value, but they need to be on the basis of having the correct muscle patterns at the beginning. 
So core stability and muscle development, I think, is hugely valuable. I think it can apply to horses doing every sport at every level. We have a variety of options of what we can use. But the big thing everyone's got to remember is it takes lots of time and effort. It does not happen overnight at all. This needs owners to really buy into it and work with it. You need to tailor it to the, to the individual horse, their fitness, posture, and strength, and, and whatever the goal is or the problem, and then adapt to their responses over time. It won't be the same muscle development exercise at the beginning and the end of your program. Thank you very much.